Great, thanks a lot for, for inviting me. Uh, yes, go. My, my, my data series that I actually was a software developer myself, actually was like studying software development in the, in the one term. But this stuff here is about gender, and gender, women, men, uh, and open source, and many things. Um, it actually started very, very clearly for me on one, on one day, actually on one, on one hour. It was like a, a revelation to me. Uh, it was like a presentation of one of the biggest conferences for software engineering. Um, and it was something about Stack Overflow. Anybody knows about Stack Overflow? Yeah. From these sites about like questions and answers and stuff. And then, and so that basically it, it got started basically by by one question from a woman in the audience asking something about the population of Stack Overflow. And so we did the study, and then we found something I think quite quite interesting. Um, so uh, we call that gender representation of online participation, and then. Uh, but yeah, I come from the Mellon University in London. Um, so essentially, Stack Overflow is just like a kind of question and answer. So they say that it's one of the fastest question and answer sites in the, in the world. Because basically what they say is that uh, most of the questions are answered quite, basically all of them. And the most important part is that it takes, on average, 11 minutes. Well, that's what they say. So you put a question and you got the answer straight away. Um, and it becomes like quite an interesting kind of place to, to interact with people. And my experience that I would actually place myself in that, in that environment and I had to disconnect after three days because it's very, uh, well it can be quite aggressive in a sense. So if you pose the, the wrong question, they really blame you in a sense of that's, that's rubbish, you should probably get away from this community. So that's the sort of uh, atmosphere which, which is there. And it's based on uh, gamification. So based on reputation, points, uh, answers, if you got a good answer, you can get like a set of points. If you write the, the right question, you get uh, more points on. Uh, if you got a good, a good comment, you get, you get points. And then essentially, uh, if you get so many points, you get badges. So the best commentator, the best uh, scavenger. So you got like the best person actually taking a question, which is like probably two years ago, and giving a fant fantastic answer that nobody thought about. You get like this kind of badge, very kind of, kind of exotic. And then basically, um, of course, like being a gamification platform, the more points give you more privileges. So you can see the users, you can apply, you can see like more APIs on the, on the site, and you got more commenting privileges, you can vote better, you can like, down for people, you can moderate discussions and so on and so forth. So, forth. so this work basically started in a conference called the uh, Mining Software Repositories. And uh, the, paper, the paper was like, okay, uh, Stack Overflow is fantastic, it's, it's the best site ever. Um, and it was called towards improving the bug tracking system. And basically it was like, let's take the, the code on Stack Overflow and let's try to use that code for having better bug detection. So actually, they are posting software, uh, source code, and then they were saying, let's use that code for production sites. Right? Um, and the program was well, very well received, but there was like one question saying, is that site attracting uh, a particular type of audience, specifically male audiences? Um, and of course, it was like driven by women. And I was like, probably there is something there because there is like lots of anecdotes on the, on the internet um, speaking about that site as being like probably a male uh, dungeon, <laughs> uh, quite quite a dark place. So you need to like to to, to be like a bit of a uh, antisocial person. <laughs> no, not really. But, um, it probably helps. Uh, but then, but then the, the questions in general were like, no? please no. And the questions that we tried to say were important for this research was like, uh, is it true that when you put a gamification layer into a participation line, you kind of increase that sort of participation? Or is it through the opposite, in a sense? Uh, and my understanding is that gaming can do something a bit um, problematic in, in, in a sense. Um, and could be probably an issue on the sustainability of the, of the site itself. So there's lots of Anecdotal evidence. So people are saying that the Stack Overflow should probably persuade female programmers to join there to have like a bit of an MSA. Um, that there are no women 
on the stock overflow <laughs> for being uh, scared away by, by, the, by the chauvinism. Um, that, that there are like blogs that speak about how the stock overflow actually ruined their days. And, uh, and of course there are questions, so there are questions speaking about, so are women progress worse <laughs> or better than men? So these are the sort of questions that you can, can get over there. And of course the topic is quite, quite a touchy topic there, because <clears throat> there are like projects, European projects speaking about uh, gender participation and so on. And I'm citing just one, um, it was called Floss Polls. <clears throat> and the idea was that they were interviewing some male and female programmers and developers and said, do you think that there is, a, there is a problem in terms of the online representation? And these were the results. Um, they said, well, the, the men <laughs> said, do you think that there is like discriminatory behaviors? And the men said, no, of course not. <laughs> and instead, when you ask women, um, from the vast majority of women said yes. Um, <clears throat> and there's one very interesting aspect, which is the, the so-called demoted skills. Uh, because in the, in the latest, well, let's say in the beginning of the 2000, uh, the idea was like that the web design skills were going more and more towards, like say, the female programmers and stuff. At that point, somebody said probably those skills got demoted and said, yeah, but yeah, this is kind of female stuff. So it's not really technical stuff here. So design, web design is probably not really, really um, technical stuff. Um, but actually, of course, they, they, they the participation or representation of gender is, is a widespread issue. So there was like one um, few years ago, there was like this kind of a, on, on the European um, project website, it was a science is the girl thing, and of course now with age 2020, there are kind of very, very specific calls for addressing the participation of uh, staff, of students, and, uh, and in general, like on, on, on wider communities. <coughs> so, I'm not a politician, I'm not a social scientist, so actually my study was something about numbers. So we went there, we measured the numbers, and I'm presenting numbers. So I'm not having like political agenda, so I'm not saying that there's like something like that, but I'm just like presenting numbers. Um, so the aim was actually saying, so let's have a quantifiable uh, evidence of the participation. Uh, is it true that there's like ratios, not balanced, and so on and so forth? Is it true that actually the engagement is not balanced? So even if you have like 10, men here and three women here. Is it true that they actually do different things? Yes, the probably is like an advancement. But is it true that the three women are doing less than the ten men? Um, so with that, we've got like three sites, question and answers. One is called the stack overflow, of course, and two are, we said it's kind of gender neutral. That's our hypothesis. And they are, of course, the WordPress and the Drupal. And they are kind of, <coughs> yes, they are for producing high-end uh, content management systems. And both of them have got a question and answer sort of hub, mailing list. So we got all the mails, all the messages, we pass them, uh, semi automatically we got the names out, the gender, and say ho hopefully we got the gender right. And then we said, is it true that we got this many women, this many men, and then how is that behavior compared to each other? Um, so, of course, two issues here uh, how to determine the gender, that's a, that's a massive issue, and second thing, how to understand the activity, the, the level of activities on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the websites, on those sites. Um, so these are the, the aims of the study. The questions were, uh, are, are there any sort of challenges to identify gender? Uh, because somehow we found that in some sites it's very difficult to find the gender at some point. Um, but then when you do that, and you do that kind of accurately, is it true that <coughs> there's a difference in terms of participation uh, by women uh, and, uh, and men? And of course, it's not just about the balance, but it's also about the activity, the level of activity. So maybe it's, there's an imbalance, but yes, but probably they do the same thing. So this is the, is the let's say the, uh, by, by, by the way, I'm trying to avoid, say, political agendas so or moralistic messages here. So let's try to, read, to, to focus on the numbers. So the picture here is that again, we've got question and answers. Uh, ideally, they are kind of comparable because we've got we're just like measuring what is the interaction of, 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 of people there. And, um, and then basically, we just like got one tool that's streamlined all the mails and all the messages from Stack Overflow and Drupal and, and WordPress. And again, we just like passed all, all this data. Uh, so the approach was um, 
to mine all this data, to extract the names, uh, hopefully to resolve the names, and I'm sorry, to resolve the, the, the gender, and then uh, after that, it was a bit easier to detect the activity of, of the people on those sites. And then again, if you want to do the proper, let's say, comparison, you probably need to achieve like a statistical comparison, right? and we use like the Wilcoxon uh, tests. Um, so the first part, of course, is the stack overflow. And at the time of the other study, we got like lots of users, like one million, and there was like a lot of noise for automatically assigning the, the gender. So we said, let's take a sample of that. So we got like uh, 4,000 users. Uh, so with 99% of confidence in that, so basically we got like a large population, we take like a sampling, a random sampling, and if you do that with 99% of confidence level, uh, you can get that 4,000 uh, users. Uh, and the resolution was not really manual, it was kind of, kind of semi-automatic semi in a sense, it was not really manual. Uh, so we got like a list of, list of male names, um, women uh, names, and then we tried to uh, at least to, to skim the first few. And then uh, when we couldn't, we started to infer the money. So the second thing, oops, uh, the second thing is, actually, is the Drupal and um, WordPress mailing list. And uh, there's like several mailing, several lists in there. Um, so you have to really drill down in terms of the number of, of lists. And in terms of, can I see that open here? In Drupal, they've got like, of course, there's like a development one. There is one about themes. There's one about translations. Uh, in the WordPress, there's like one about WP WordPress hackers, and of course, one is one of the most uh, used on the day. It's like 43,000 uh, messages there. And overall, we got 3,000 participants in one, and in the other one, 3,000 again. Um, in all of them, so we got the text of the message, name, uh, surname, and then essentially, if one message was actually in response to something else, so you can actually see if some message was actually in response to other messages. Um, uh, the next one is about the same thing. So the idea is that, really, to try to grind all these things, so get like something like, uh, in terms of name, the name of the person, so the person, uh, the country or appearance, and then try to infer from that sort of automatic tool the gender, either masculine, feminine, or if we couldn't find any, like apply the big X. Uh, we, we don't know, um, and we developed like a whole Python tool so for for finding the data into getting the data, the, the, the names and surnames out, uh, up all the way to, to getting the, the gender out. So sometimes the gender resolution is very simple. Uh, you got pictures, names, straightforward, right? But of course, it's not always the same. You got issues in terms of country. So sometimes my name in this country is actually a female name. So my, my account is actually a maintenance name. So you have to see that in Stack Overflow, somebody has got my own name, but then in the US and the UK, the same name has got a female connotation. So basically we got the name and the country of origin. So we try to infer something about the names and the countries. Um, and basically we say that the name and the location infer the gender. Uh, some other times we had to take the, na the names and then go to the website and double check if we could find any idea of, of the gender. Some of the times we actually need to, to see basically need to, to get the wise name out of like some, some strange pseudo program. And then sometimes we got the long so that we applied the, the along so sort of um, sort of proxy in a sense. Um, but the, the last layer that we applied was a bit, um, a bit kind of really, really heavy. So we got somebody that we couldn't infer anything. So we went actually on their site, and then basically we, we parsed the HTML of their sites, and then tried to get names and surnames, and then extracted that, and then tried to get the, the, the gender out. Um, so it was, a, it was a long, long collection of data, but then I think it was, it was one thing. Uh, so the uh, the test was like, of course, to draw another hypothesis and then an alternative hypothesis. And of course, we wanted to see whether or not the, the men and women are represented equally in those sites. And of course, the other hypothesis was that actually they are similarly represented. And again, in the other hypothesis, was like they are statistically doing the same things, 
or they are statistically making the same number of questions, they are statistically making the same number of answers, and so on and so forth. Uh, whereas the uh, alternative hypothesis was like, probably men make more questions, answer, or answer more questions, um, or they've got higher reputation levels, for instance, in terms of, um, in terms of stack overflow. And of course, it was three-way testing, like masculine, feminine, and then again, uh, the gender which we couldn't, couldn't infer. And then being, of course, we got like a vector of maybe 2,000 men, and maybe, maybe a vector of 1,000 women. They're not equal, so you need to apply man women or with Roxon test. So because, of course, like it's a different sets of data. So the first set of um, results is that, basically, this then set of results. In terms of stack overflow, so the first slide is actually stack overflow. Men, women, and unknowns. WordPress, if you look at the numbers, um, it's very simple to uh, mask your gender in general. But in stack overflow, it actually goes up to quite a big extent. So it's like around 30 something percent of users choose to mask their own uh, names or gender. Um, whereas it's much easier to find the gender of WordPress users and people users. Um, and the second thing is that basically, in terms of the representation there, we found that in terms of open source development, it was like 1 to 5% of women involved, but in these sort of communities, we found 7 to 10%. Um, and in general, in the, in the literature, we find up to 28% in the proprietary systems. Um, the second thing is that we found that essentially um, there was some differences in terms of the mailing lists. Sometimes the women actually were more active on the mailing list of using the technology rather than the, the design of the technology, not mailing lists. Uh, and again, once again, so it's much easier to remain anonymous or to mask your gender to stay in that side, to, to stay in the stack of flow. Um, in terms of the last two, the WordPress and Drupal, we found that um, in terms of questions, answers, and length of engagement between men and women, there is no difference, statistical difference. So, in terms of numbers, so if we get the two vectors of men and women, um, number of questions, there is no statistical difference, number of answers, same thing, and length of engagement in terms of first message posted and last message posted, there is the same sort of um, time span. In terms of the unknowns, um, it was, well, there are unknowns because sometimes you go webmaster at something something and you cannot quantify the gender in there. So sometimes the webmasters are designers of those web websites, so that is reflected on the engagement on the design tech mailing lists. So we found some differences in terms of uh, how gender and non gender was actually. Uh, different in terms of engagement of, uh, of those lists. Um, oops. Ah, sorry. So in terms of stack overflow, instead we found that men, in terms of engagement of, of activities, they, they engage for longer. Right? And then uh, there's no difference in terms of number of answers, so the engagement, so in terms of activity, okay, it's actually the, quite, quite the same. Uh, but women tend to ask more questions. We found that. So <laughs> that is like a kind of natural thing. Um, so there is a big thing actually that is not here, but actually one of the conclusions was uh, women tend to run away <laughs> much quicker than, than men. So they kind of engage over there, but then they disengage quite quicker from, from, the, from, from that website. Um, and when we look at the literature, we found that there are several, several reasons. One of them is that they, they say that women are less effective in some sort of mixed gender competitive environments. Um, there are, there is of course, this kind of theory that um, is called the, uh, not the culprit effect, but it's called the, uh, I don't 
So basically, they shy, the women shy away from, from competition. They feel like they're not up to standard. Come on, ladies. No, no, they're not, 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 not from, from They shy away when they can't win. <laughs> no, that's how I'm just reporting that. Well, there are people talk about the imposter effect. Imposter syndrome, exactly. Oh, imposter, imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome, right, yes. yes. Women are afraid they might be exactly. exposed as not having the expertise that they have. Uh, yeah, and we are proposing that basically. Yeah. I, if I was to. Produce like a, I would probably stay away from gamification techniques because it's probably not just like the right signals. So it's probably just like making points and just like I don't those. Right, pretty, it's, pretty it's much. It's only into the ways that women compete. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, they're not competing, so they using different frameworks. Yeah, so I think it was really an interesting kind of perspective because I, the, the, there's like so much so much talk about these things and say that there must be an issue there. There are no women because such and such. But then when you start measuring things, of course there's the big issue of how to measure things. But then when you really measure um, the effects, you can probably see, see the effects. And then the future work for me is that if you apply the same sort of level, same sort of analysis to, um, to wider communities, not just like the open source communities, you can really have a feel of uh, understand in any organization where there is like a problem in the organization and whether you can actually apply some um, some techniques, some some procedures to to make that community a bit better and then qualitatively triangulate that with interviews and so on. So I've got a proposal, anybody's interested, I'm, I'm, I'm developing something like a proposal for that. Um, and the, in terms of the summary, basically, so we've got this is the summary of the, sorry, that was the, the so that I think was actually what, what I was meant to, to show you. So yes, basically we found that it's much easier in that stock, stock overflow to shy away or hide away or be anonymous. Um, the level of women we found was around 7 to 10% of, of the overall general, general participation there. In the WordPress and Drupal, no differences for some reasons, but I'm not referring to any reasons. In terms of stack overflow and work um, and, 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 and men and women, actually yes, we found that the, term, the, the, the terms of engagement for women was much shorter than men, uh, but there was no difference in terms of number of answers or the sort of collaborating within the community. There was no difference in there. And that's it. So the questions are, uh, if you want to ask any questions, are happy. Yeah. Um, there's no real nice policy on Stack Overflow. Is yeah. there a real nice policy on either Drupal or WordPress? No. So do you have any kind of explanation for why there was some much higher incidence of gender neutrality on, on Stack I Overflow? I don't want to be political. <laughs> yeah, uh, right, okay. Because the, the, the sheer number that were um, conceiving their gender on Stack Overflow, it's, a lot. it's really a lot, and it's enough to skew yeah. anything you yeah. might say about it. Mm -hmm. And well, I know personally, I don't know about your kind, but I never go into those communities with a female name. Mm. But I, uh, <laughs> I have to admit that I, uh, I never, I, I have searched them and used material from them, but I've never contributed. Uh, okay. But there's a famous gender swapping uh, thing. So basically, yes. I'm a man, and I will be there as a woman because I know that probably women are being treated a bit better. Yes. Not. <laughs> Not yeah, no, which you <laughs> You are using the name and uh, the country to 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 to, 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 to if, the, if there was a country. Yeah, there was but, no but sometimes in the same country the name can be either man or woman. For the I showed you yeah. one example mm -hmm. of that, but trust me that in that sense we were really thorough mm -hmm. into understanding where, which was who. It was really, really a long process. So I'm quite confident that, in terms of stack overflow at least, mm -hmm. we're really going on the extra mile to understand who who is who. Very good. Just I'll be careful with words on this, but uh, so I'm <laughs> ju just coming back to that diff that stack overflow because obviously it, it is it, I mean, it's in terms of significance, it's extremely significant. Mm -hmm. I just wonder whether, with the other two, dare I say it, the the, the it, it, it it may be. Let's just make an assumption here, this might be completely wrong, but most of those ones who, who you can't identify are male. And let's say, I could be 
should be very careful about this, but, but let's say that they, that they view themselves, they view themselves in a different way to the way the the the, the, the other in the other two cases. In other words, there's a the, the way the males the male makeup of that of that organisation is slightly different. So the male make the characteristics of the average male on that, if you like, are slightly different to, to what they are in the other two. And I, I mean, obviously, there's all kinds of things we could go into. We, you know, we could talk about sexuality and that type of thing. But it, it may be, I mean, it could be as simple as you know, all the people in stack flow being a public school. I mean, it's a stupid comment, but I mean, you know, <laughs> I can't just, no, 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 I'm just saying that there could be something common. <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't mean this. But it's the characteristics of those people, you know, let's say they all support Tottenham Hotspur, but it's this type of, this, this type of thing where, the, where there's possibly, a, because what you were saying about Stack Overflow was they, they appear to be tearing into themselves quite viciously. Yes. And there could be some characteristics about the, about, you know, the, I mean, about the male population in Stack Overflow that are not quite the same as any other shit anyway. Yeah. Well, my, 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 my theory is that if you remove the gaming effect, so accumulate importance, mm. being a better, uh, I'm better than you, yeah. uh, I've got better privileges, I've got more privileges. If you take away that thing, everything reverts back to the WordPress sort of community. Well, so right. you just like answer if you know the answer, just answer. Mm. But now, nowadays everything goes towards the end. I've got some points, measurements, I've got 50,000 points, I've got... And of course, there's, there's actually with lots of points, now there's like a like a chasm website of Stack Overflow, you, you, which actually you, you can get a job. So you've got so many points, you can trade those points for well, the job interviews. Because that's the blindly obvious thing, but then you've got some extremely other competitive people yeah. in Stack Overflow. Yeah. Yeah. I think one of the things I'd like to pick up from what you're saying is that there's a lot of discussion about discrimination against women in open source. Um, one of the times when I was stupid enough to reveal my gender on the London Linux user group, um, I got so spectacularly bullied that the, um, that the system administrators, I emailed them and said, look, you know, and they said, oh, come on, I'm sure you're a rep blast. So I emailed them the log and they went, oh, oh my God. <laughs> and I had about half a dozen. The administrators went, oh, please don't make this trend you about this. And I got about six different emails from men on the list telling me they've been bullied for their class origins. That's interesting. Oh, yes. See. That's, that is very interesting because I raised that point. Because, like, I, I raised that point <laughs> because the, it wasn't, I raised the class side because it wasn't raised in the, it's not it raised in the topic. We'll speak more about that if you want to. Yeah, no, I, the, yeah. I'm going to talk about diversity in a minute. Yeah. 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 Uh, Andrea, just picking up a bit on some of these things, I work on the hardware end of software, okay. Jeff, okay. and there are, you know, no women ever come to meetings, and it's, you know, for whatever reason. Has anyone looked at any cross correlations? One of the things that comes to me, just because people I've worked with, is this is my field is one that is a very heavily skewed proportion of people on the, on the autistic spectrum. Oh. And, and autism is about 10 times as common in men as in really? women. Has there been any studies looking at in the, uh, cross correlating between that that I once did a, uh, um, yeah, years and years ago, I did uh, a course at Gothenburg University on uh, open source uh, history and blah. And a flurry of bullying erupted on the um, Noodle boards. And um, somebody said, oh, well, you know, there's, there's lots, so many of us have Asperger's, blah, blah, blah. So I sent them all off to do the standard diagnostic test for Asperger's on the Oxford website. And the own, uh, I think maybe two of them came out with Asperger's. Most of them were well in the normal range. But the, I thought, the, I think I... Just being... No, I, I, understand, I understand that particular case. I thought there were published studies in the, in the autism field that showed autism was associated with the engine, not open source, with engineering disciplines. I thought that was established medical fact. Um, ooh, it's, there's big debates around all of that stuff because they think that they are failing to diagnose women because um, the characteristics of autism are so inconsistent with what is expected of women that the predominantly male doctors are, are unable to diagnose it. Okay, I think then step back, if I can step back, I picked up autism because I thought that was one that was established, but yeah. what I was looking at is, 
sometimes we can look at two things that are correlated and mix the thing in the middle, which is actually what they're correlated with. And it was really whether there have been any studies to look at actually other correlations so that the groups that you're studying are sub-selecting from another group and that group is the one that has the problem and then it's reflected in... I think that's possible, but again, my experience of dealing with coders who will put their hands up to Asperger's is that they're generally the least... Yeah, I was not, would not Asperger's. <laughs> with. I, I, yes, and whether it's Asperger's as well, I wonder if, if there's been any studies of sub-correlations in there because, you know, the classic thing is you go and treat the wrong problem Mm -hmm. because you're actually not treating the real problem, you're treating a symptom of a different problem. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and that was, I was just curious if anyone's looked at it from this field. But the, the, the only answer I can, I can actually do here, if you take any questions on start of about male and female and gender, there's like, yeah, they have to close those questions no, no, I know, because I know. they get so much flame on those on those. No, no, I'm, I'm only too well aware. I'm not, I'm not justifying any of it. Yeah, I'm, yeah, just, yeah. I'm just curious as when you try and solve the problem, yeah. of different areas to explore. But there's always this, this kind of dual view, basically, for, for men, if you speak about these things, you've got a political agenda. For women, if you speak about these things, or oh, finally you're speaking about these things. So there's like, there's no middle ground there. So can you just like, see, see if there's a problem, quantify that problem. If there's a problem, you can quantify that and, and show the numbers. That's, mm -hmm. that's what I, I can do. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, one, 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 one. Is that is there a difference between when Sappho opened up and when Drupal and WordPress? Because uh, certainly what I've seen uh, has nothing to do at all with, uh, with computing, it's to do with just people. Is that if you, if you do get a, a group of people, a small group of people, and they essentially they establish a culture, and then trying to, to you know, sort of almost a clique type thing, and trying to sort of, then people come not afterwards, but often they won't stay unless they fit the mm -hmm. cultural. Uh, uh, response and, and, and fit of the originating group, and so you can have a group that's, that's long lived, but actually is is or is, is self-selecting versus another group that is, is has a different culture when it starts up, and, and is you know again I'm just I don't actually know about the Stack Overflow, I don't know about Drupal and, and WordPress, and I was just wondering the numbers were so so different there. Yep. And I just wondered was there something else that was you know could be driving. Well, if you, definitely there are some rules, rules of the game, yeah, you have to apply the, the rules of the games, and then essentially if you don't apply them, you're just like out, essentially you're out. If you're just like behaving a bit differently, they, they call you like a stranger, they call you a weirdo, go away, we don't, we don't understand your contributions. So really myself, I had to, <laughs> I had to step away after less than a week. It was just like a question, was like kind of, kind of asking, can you fill up this question for me? And I got so much, so much. Spam and abuse, but it's just like, mm -hmm. it's really, really mm -hmm. embarrassing. You know? I think it's probably also interesting to note that both WordPress and Drupal, as, as far as I'm aware, certainly Drupal and I think definitely WordPress have actually taken active steps to ensure that there's yeah. you know, more balance on that, that they have policies in place and you know, they have to try. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Andrew.